everyone's always intrigued to hear and get our sound. Can we please give them another round? Of applause? Yeah. Hey, sometimes you gotta fight to get your voice heard, so come on up. I had to go to I just wanted to say hello to everybody and thank you all for being here and being a part of this effort at the time. It's put together over 20 years ago, I believe, when I first heard Todd on the Mary Mason program hmm. talking about how to part of the kingdom. And it was a big rule out about that because a lot of people felt that you should be paid for your work. And that black people have always worked in this country, I mean, mostly for free. But as you see, as time is going by, that volunteerism is a good thing. And we have all volunteered sometimes in our lives to help other people. We're followers of the Cecil B. Moore, and we have a Cecil B. Moore for a lot of freedom fighters. And our mission is keep the legacy of Cecil B. Moore alive here in the city of Philadelphia and the world. Because this man has done so many things to help not only black folks, but white folks. And don't ever think, when you come, anybody that comes to this country, there was a fight put down. And a lot of us were on the front line, we're still on the front line now, but from the efforts of all of our efforts, we made it a decent place for people to be here in America. And don't stop volunteerism, and don't stop the fight, because the fight for equality and justice, which was instilled in us uh, under Cecil B. Moore Esquire, Sergeant Major in the um, United States Marine, City Councilman. These are the things that inspired us as teenagers when we were out here over 50 years ago. Now, the day Dr. King came here, everybody, a lot of people were out to hear Dr. King, who was going to give the best speech she saw Dr. King. And both men held their ground because they had different ways of doing things. Uh, when Dr. King was here, uh, we were unjustly. Uh, accused of desecrating the American flag, we were all arrested at 16 or 17 years old over here. And we were lied upon, we said, we stomped the flag and we spit on the flag. And we were vilified and oppressed. But we did not do this. And even Cecil, who was a car carrying the United States Marine and a patriot, he was upset until he heard our side of the story and he believed us. So don't ever think the fight for equality and justice is over. As long as you have people here in this world, somebody's going to be unjustly treated. And it's up to us to stand up for those people, and even for the people that can't speak for themselves. It's up to us. Justice is a right. It's not a privilege. Justice is a right. It should be a right. Don't anybody ever think. We can't stop now. We must continue to fight for equality and justice here in the United States of America and anywhere in the world. And it's up to us. And those people that are in high positions, a lot of you know what's going on. You can reach down and help somebody. You can spread a little word. But let's pray. Raise your hand. Listen, we're going to do a Cecil B. Moore mural. Yeah. We just decided. Yeah. It's a grand of applause. It was, we had one, and it was built. Someone built in front of it, and that was really sad. And now we're going to do it. You totally inspired us. We make a commitment today. Yay. OK, good morning, <laughs> everyone. I'm so honored to be here. This is such a great tradition um, to be here at Gerard College to announce the Martin Luther King Day of Service and to work with the awesome, wonderful Ted Bernstein. So, for those of you who come back every year, you sort of know what we do. Each year we select a particular theme connected to Dr. King and as students of schools throughout the region to depict and interpret an event, a theme, an idea connected to Dr. King. We want young people to look at history, to study it, analyze it, and then create a beautiful visual interpretation of a significant period of time. And here, as in all our art ed programs, we ask students not just to create, as wonderful as that is, but to think, to analyze, to advocate, to challenge, and change the world through paint, through color, and words. This year, the students read about the Montgomery Bus Boycott. The Montgomery Bus Boycott was a seminal event in the U.S. Civil Rights Movement. It was a political and social protest and campaign against the policy of racial segregation on the public transit system in Montgomery, Alabama. The campaign lasted from December 1st, 1955, when Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to surrender her seat to a white person. Rosa Parks, I love her, to December 20th, 1956, when a federal ruling, Browder versus Gale, took effort and led a US Supreme Court decision that declared that Alabama and Montgomery laws 
requiring segregated buses were unconstitutional. In the aftermath of Rosa Parks' arrest, the first mass meeting in Montgomery, it was of the Montgomery Improvement Association, was organized and attracted thousands of people to the Holt Street Baptist Church. There, Dr. King delivered an address that he quickly had composed. The questions that went through his mind, he was asking himself, how could he make a speech that, as he said, would be militant enough to keep my people aroused to positive actions, yet moderate enough to keep the fervor within Christian bounds, end of quote. King, in the speech, described the mistreatment of African-American bus passengers, the civil disobedience of Rosa Parks, and then justified the nonviolent protests by appealing to the African-American Christian faith in love and justice and how there is a robust history of protests in this country. He talks about love, but make no mistake about it, he talks about justice. So we ask the students to read this address, to look at the overarching issues of justice, economic, racial, criminal, social, environmental, religious, and then to pick excerpts of this speech and look at the context and the themes and paint a mural about what they read. And why is this important? As Karen said, because current events tell us that the search for justice goes on. And if we don't understand the significance of the past, if we don't keep our heroes alive, 